Good afternoon, baseball fans. Welcome to the campus of UMass Dartmouth, home of the Corsairs, but today, home of the Hilltoppers. We mentioned on previous broadcasts that Durfee playing their home games here, at least until uh, Skip Lewis Field is deemed ready to play on, and we're not even really sure if that's going to happen. But, um, man, what a beautiful field here. And uh, big three baseball on tap. Durfee and New Bedford scoring off for the first time this season. Evan Massoud and Zach Souza with you on Fred TV. Uh, Zach did basketball with me back in the winter. Just finished up his first year right here at UMass. Got to play on this field. So, Zach, glad you're with me. And, uh, you know, why don't we start with you? Tell us a little about the field. <laughs> How does the field play? <laughs> it's uh, got to be a little bit better than uh, Skip Lewis oh, Field, absolutely. which always takes on water. Yeah, this field here plays wonderful. Uh, the only issue is the wind is almost always either blowing out foul or blowing in at you. So so it's hard. It's, uh, it's definitely a very, very difficult field to hit on. I would call it a pitcher's park. Oh, no doubt. I mean, we're sitting here and the wind's blowing right at us, so I would venture to say the only ball that might leave has to be a real smash and it's going to go to left. First pitch swinging, grounded to the left side. Nice snag by Arietta for out number one. C.J. Dunstan retired on one pitch, the first pitch of the game from uh, Ethan Ferreira. We'll take a look at the starters here for... The Whalers, the starting nine. You just saw C.J. Dunstan, the catcher. Xavier Dominguez stepping up now, the center fielder. Will Santiago in left. Frannick Jamie in right in the cleanup spot. Batting fifth is Ian DaCosta at short. Yomar Perez, the second baseman, bats sixth, followed by Owen Tarpey, the D.H. Parker Moranis at third, batting eighth. And in the number nine spot, the first baseman, Will Tarpey. Swung on and missed, and quickly 0-2 on Dominguez. Zach, you want to take the defense for the Hilltoppers? Yeah, sure, I'll take the defense. Uh, the infield for the Hilltoppers will go thir third to first. We have Ishmael Moreno at third, Jose Arrieta at short, Braden Buston at second, Curtis Perry at first. Outfield will go left to right, Chris Kadima in left. We have Jose Pabon in center, and we have Kevin Mativier in right. Ethan Ferrer due to pitching and catching for him is Brett Fonseca. That's popped down the line, having some room there is Perry and he makes the catch on the pop. Two down for Ferreira and the Hilltoppers. Durfee at 11 and three, their latest win coming yesterday, which was Tuesday. They blew out Tiverton uh, eight to one. The Bedford coming in at five and nine. Durfee's already played Brockton twice, so uh, and now they're one and one in the big three. They lost to Brockton last week, and then uh, previously though the, the the win was that twenty two to nine, just crazy. Yeah, game. crazy last <laughs> inning. <laughs> really, I mean, thirteen run ninth inning. Yeah. I mean, hello. <laughs> you don't see many of those. I mean, that's like a football score. Chopper to the left side, out of play, and two strikes. Yeah, on I mean, the batter. I mean, not too often do you see 13 runs in a game, never mind in one inning. Yeah, really. That's insane. <laughs> so Santiago down in the count. Ferreira looking for a 1-2-3 first. And Santiago lays off. Is it strange coming back and calling a game against your buddies? <laughs> yeah, it's weird being on this side of the fence for a Durfee <laughs> baseball game. That one down and in, and it runs the count full. A lot of new faces, though, on the roster. I, I mean, you know, th we've s I've said it before, the weather was so bad in April. This is our first baseball game, which is just, like, embarrassing. But, you know, it is what it is. I mean, <laughs> not much you can do about it. One, two, three inning is... Not going to happen here in the first as uh, Ferreira walks the third batter here. A two-out walk issued to Santiago, and we'll see the cleanup hitter, Frantic Jamie. And, uh, you know, those free passes, anytime you give a team extra outs or free base runners, always seems to come back to bite you. So, uh, you know, hopefully for Durfee's sake, this does not come back to bite them because uh, Ferreira got two real quick outs. Yeah, he was cruising along to the first two batters. He didn't look too bad against uh, Santiago, just got away from him. 
Oh, he stutter step at first as uh, Santiago trying to get an extra lead, maybe a walking steal there, walking jump. So he may look to try to take off. Gonna check out right got first, him, and they got, got him. him! He's out at first base! Picked off to end the inning, so Ferreira faces the minimum in the top of the first. Real good move, and you could <laughs> you could tell that Santiago, he wanted to go that last pitch, and he, he got caught off, so he retreated, and you knew he was going, and he was gonna go. That's when you know they're going on the move, <laughs> and not like kind of a safety steal, if you will. They go on the first flinch for the pitcher, and that time he got caught off. Yeah, good job by Ferrer not to balk. He started to flinch and move right. early. <laughs> but Ferrer just stepped off and caught him in midair. Had nowhere to go. So the runner erased on the pickoff. And the Whalers coming up. Boy, it is breezy here today. I mean, we'll take it. It's better than rain, but it is breezy. About 66 degrees at game time. And we do have sun, which is wonderful, let me tell you. So, on behalf of uh, the Durfee Athletic Department, just a big thanks to uh, Jack Holleran, Frank Sherman, here at uh, UMass, Jim Seavey, um, these guys helping us out. Because, of course, you know, you're, you're already out, Zach. So school's done here at the college level, so the season's done. And uh, this field open. Dartmouth's been playing games here as well. There's lacrosse going on right now. Somebody was using the softball field. So uh, not too shabby here. I mean, college facilities always in good shape and uh, I'm sure that uh, UMass is happy to see it being used. Yeah, it's been a very busy campus. Very busy oh, yeah. with all the teams playing here. Let me tell you, the football stadium just looks absolutely gorgeous too. That, that was renovated, you know, not too long ago. Field turf, you know, new new uh, press box. And everything looks so nice here. Um, I actually thought, you know, they were going to put turf down here. I mean, grass is always, you know, I mean, baseball grass, I, I think it goes without saying. That's just like preferred. Yeah. I mean, it's the old classic, but right. it's certainly more maintenance than, <laughs> than, you know, the fake stuff, of course. <laughs> but Yeah, it definitely takes a lot more work to keep it up. All right, why don't you take the lineup for the Hilltoppers, and I'll take the defense this time. All right, batting leadoff, we have Jose Pabon, followed by Jose Arrieta. Batting third is Alex Dominguez. Brett Fonseca hitting in the cleanup. After him, batting five is Kevin Mativia. Ishmael Moreno batting six. Curtis Perry in the seventh spot. Braden Buston batting eighth. And Chris Kadima in the nine hole. <laughs> thank you, thank you. Couple fans here uh, noticing us. <laughs> Inside out swing, and they will tag Pabon for out number one. So we call that one one unassisted. Defense for the Whalers stacks up like this in the infield. Starting at third, Moranis at third, DaCosta at short, Perez at second, and Will Tarpey at first. Left to right in the outfield, Santiago, Dominguez, and Jamie. And we have Will Green on the hill. Catching is Dunstan. And Green getting that first out on his own, and now strike one to Arietta. Arietta up there um, with the batting average, third on the team with a 346 average. Jeffrey really, you know, hitting the ball pretty well. Not a lot of power. Uh, like, home run numbers seem down. Of course, they don't have Zach. <laughs> <laughs> they don't have Remy. Right. You know, because <laughs> uh, you guys both had, you know, pretty good offensive outputs the last couple seasons um, but you know when you're hitting for average you're getting on base you're going to score runs that one gets by the pitcher ranging in to make the play was Perez for three and there are two down but I mean yeah I mean I've always said this before you know a guy like say Adam Dunn who's hitting 200 and, and it's smashing 40 home runs I'll take someone hitting 350 and hitting 10 home runs any day Lou Gonzalo step coming over to see us. Man, this is like a receiving line. You're like the third person already. <laughs> they work in uh, Frank Sherman, the athletic director, is working the music and, and the scoreboard for us. It's always nice to get visited by people. But, you know, it's always funny when, you know, 
people come and talk to us, we're the ones with the headsets on. Yeah. <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> we're, you know, we're working here. <laughs> That's okay. We always like the camaraderie. So Alex Dominguez up at the plate with two down, swinging over that one. That was a nasty, uh, looks like a changeup, something. Maybe a changeup or a split. Really just fell right off the table. Durfee bench very animated right now, cheering on. That's a line drive right back where it came from. First hit of the day for either side. Dominguez on with two down, so the DH does his job with the single to center, and we'll see the cleanup hitter, Brett Fonseca. You know, we're talking about average before Lou came over to say hi. So, you know, these guys hitting for average. We see a lot of guys, 10 RBI, 11 RBI, 8 RBI. So they got a productive lineup. Only two home runs, though, in the start between the starting nine. So, you know, the ball staying in the park, part of that could also be, you know, possibly where they've been playing. <laughs> yeah, no, <laughs> it's know, a very this, big field. This place, is, you know, you know, 340 down each line. The ball and the wind. The ball does not leave this field very easily. No. Definitely had to have a great poke to get it out of here. Yeah. Skip Lewis Field, I think, you know, left field. Oh, that's driven deep to left center field, ranging over is Dominguez. And over there, it's actually, Santiago makes the play. I thought that ball was right crushed. Right there, too. That's what we were just talking about. That yeah. wind killed that. That ball on a... If that was Skip Lewis Field, right. it's gone. <laughs> yeah, you're talking here. It's two-run home run. Right. Two-nothing game. Here it's a uh, lazy fly to left field <laughs> and the third out. All right, after one inning here from UMass, no score between Durfee and New Bedford. <clears throat> and we're back, top of the second. And we will see the middle third of the lineup here. Uh, Frantic Jamie was already up, but he had to wait to hit because Santiago got picked off at first base. So now Jamie comes up here with nobody on to lead off the second inning, the cleanup hitter for New Bedford. Swinging a miss for strike one, first pitch of the inning. So that's now two innings in a row. We've seen the first pitch get swung on. So Whaler's coming in, uh, trying to be aggressive against Ferreira, who's definitely more of a contact guy, not necessarily a, a power pitcher. That's flared out to the right side and a little basket catch by Perry for out number one. His second pop fly out. We'll see Ian DaCosta, the shortstop. Yeah, Ferreira's the type of pitcher where he's not going to go out there and get you, you know, double-digit strikeouts in the game, but he's going to get you to ground balls, the bloopers. He's got a tremendous changeup. If he can get it going, it's almost unhittable. It's an, it's a, it was fun to catch. It was awesome. Yep, Coach Dave Olmschneider, the uh, head coach for Durfee, just recently picked up his 200th varsity win overall. That's combined not just Durfee, but other coaching ventures as well. And... Uh, Coach here now, this is his fifth season with the Hilltoppers, and he said that. He said, Ferreira, if, if his changeup is on, forget it. Yeah, it's, <laughs> it's insane. He, that's, that's, that was the warning. So, um, you know, he, he's hoping that Ferreira is the go-to guy today and that the change is working. So these two teams actually taking a while. And this is late in the season here. Durfee, you know, with, played already 14 games and would have played more if it wasn't for so many rainouts and location changes. But uh, these two teams were supposed to play. What was it? A couple of weeks ago, you said. Yeah. And because um, you had planned, you showed up. You planned to go, yeah. and then there was no game. Nothing uh, there. No uh, one and no anything. Yeah. Uh, allegedly, the field was not in proper condition to play. But you tell me it was a little dry. It looked pretty good. Yeah, it didn't seem too bad. I mean, unless the outfield grass was wet, the yeah. infield dirt didn't seem like there was many puddles or even damp. So that's the only thing I could imagine. Swing and a miss, and DaCosta is the first strikeout victim of the day for Ferreira, and there's two down. Yeah, I know. We'll, we'll never know. I mean, I we don't go on the road. You know that, unless it's playoffs. Um, and, of course, this being you know a unique situation. <laughs> You have to go where the game is. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> this is the home game. This is what it is. But um, we don't go on the road for for the regular season because if we did, then we'd have to do that for every team. And sometimes you have teams that are doing big three games at home while there's others on the road. So then it's like, how do you choose? So we stick to home games unless it's playoffs. And um, so I wasn't there to personally see the field, but. We'll leave it at that. <laughs> but this, I can tell you right now, there is, uh, as that's grounded to the left side, a chance for one, two, three. Nice scoop 
on both ends of that. Marino to Perry for the put out. And the side is retired in order right through the middle part of the lineup. Ferreira getting it done in the second inning. And here in the break between top and bottom half of the second, you know, we will say this, that there is certainly no love loss between these two teams. <laughs> because the rivalry between Durfee and New Bedford, you know, goes back forever. Oh, yeah, it's and, something uh, different. It's awesome. It's a great. Oh, yeah. And uh, those of you who saw our coverage last year knows that it got a little chippy at the end of last year's game, and actually even during, but more so at the end of the game at, at Durfee when Hilltoppers came out on top. I think it was 4-3. It was like a one run. It was a close game. Very, if yeah. memory, I checked it earlier, and now I'm questioning what I saw, but I'm pretty sure it was 4-3. Uh, and uh, so, yeah, things got a little chippy, and there's been some trash talk uh, between both sides, that's for sure. And uh, so we hope that we hope that it's a, uh, a clean game here and we focus on baseball and that nobody starts any drama. Yeah, that's the beauty of the rivalry, though. That I know. You never know. Yep. That's, you never know what to expect. Anything can happen. Emotions run high. The adrenaline gets going. I mean, you saw, everybody saw the New Bedford basketball game we did. Uh, two years in a row, it's been pretty nuts at the field house. And uh, this year, Durfee came out on top. Okay, Hilltoppers expecting five, six, and seven in the order. Kevin Mativier will start it off. 304, a home run, and 11 RBI. One of the best, I guess you could say, better power hitters here. That is driven deep to left field, down the line, and it is a fair ball. Oh, oh no, no. It called foul just to the left oh. of the line. That was a frozen rope. Oh. There is very little foul ground when you get to that corner. <laughs> yeah. Tomorrow and, angle. Uh, man, Matibier let it rip on pitch number one. That would have been two bases. Yeah, from our angle, I thought that picked up chalk. That looked really close. <laughs> that was. Our home plate umpire was right on the line. And this one's going to be a chopper to third, played by Moranis. Oh, oh. oh, no, he botched it. So leadoff man is going to reach on the E5. Mativier at first, and now Ishmael Moreno will step up to the plate. He's the only other hilltopper in the lineup with a big fly. You know, these are the kind of games, and this is what happened in that in the game last year too. Is you know, Durfee got out to the early lead. You want to play with the lead in big games like this. You just then you kind of control the game a bit. That gets away, but not too far, not far enough for Mativier to try it. But you know, I mean, you know, when you're playing with the lead, you're a little more relaxed. Hmm. You can you know work the work the plate a little different with the strike zone. You're not you know take you know have your basically like. Overwhelmed with every pitch, you know, don't want to make a mistake. That's a rip to left field, and that is a fair ball. A line drive single for Moreno, and the first two reach for the Hilltoppers. Curtis Perry, your highest average on the team right now, 481. Perry having a good season, the first baseman. Good opportunity here. Sent to the left side, gonna touch third for the force out. First pitch swinging was Perry, and that erases Mativier, five to three. Up to second, Moreno at first on the fielder's choice is Curtis Perry, and now we'll see Braden Buston. 250, no homers and six ribbies. And he swings through the first pitch, right on top of it. That was a good changeup from Green. Very similar to what we've seen from yeah. Ferreira in the first couple innings as well. That ball looked like it started, those ones look like they start right at the belt, and then at the end, if you can get it to drop at the end, you're looking at some a lot of swings and misses. Another off-speed pitch, you could see it, almost like a palm ball, way in the back of the hand. 
getting the drag on the fingers, and it looks like a fastball and just dies. Yep. Kadima on deck. One down here. Bustin hoping to strike first for the Hilltoppers and bring home a run. That's upstairs. And a good hitter's count now for Braden. 2-1. Slaps it to right, this could get down if it's a fair ball. It is a fair ball. Oh, and they're gonna send the runner, and we're gonna have a play at the plate, and he will be safe. Got it under the tag. Moreno motored around third, and he scores the first run of the ball game. RBI single for Braden Buston is one nothing Durfee. I'm surprised they waved him around because that, that wasn't a deep fly ball. That wasn't a deep line drive. That was just a bleeder over the first baseman's head. Just just stayed up long enough for him to get around. I got very nervous there. I <laughs> thought he was <laughs> seriously, I thought he was gonna be out. Because Jamie got to that rather quickly too. Slap shot to right to the right side rather and uh, scooped up by Tarpy back to the bag is busted and now two down. So Kadima with a quick out. Was that caught on the fly or did he go they to the They called back? it on the fly. They I, did call I, don't, it. I don't think it was. I think that was a missed call, but it worked in Durfee's favor there. Yeah, it sure did. So Kadima out number two, and we back to the top of the lineup. Pabon at the plate. Pabon. He grounded back to the pitcher. No for one. Ground ball to the left side, and a very easy play from Moranis. Stepping on the bag. Three unassisted. But the Hilltoppers strike first here. In big three play, lead at one nothing after two. Hello, I am Kelly Susie Young, your election commissioner. We mailed out 50,000 census forms this year and we'd like to hear back from you as soon as possible. Okay, I'd like to fill out a census. Sure. State and federal programs use census reports as a fair way to distribute funds for health, education, job training, as well as assistance for elders and veterans. Do you need a form? Call 508-324-2630. Your photo status is stated as active or inactive. If no changes are needed, simply sign and mail it back. To save postage and for your convenience, forms may be dropped off at Shores, Shaw's Market, Seabra Foods, and both Stop and Shop locations. There is also a drop box like this one in the government center lobby to put your census in. Thank you, and we would love to hear from you. Welcome back to you, Mass Dartmouth. For Big Three Baseball, Evan Massard and Zach Souza with you. Hilltoppers with the early lead here. one nothing after two as we begin the third inning, and it's Owen Tarpey at the plate, the DH, facing Ferreira. And Ferreira starts off ahead with a strike. That one downstairs is that real good change up from Ferreira. One strikeout so far. That came last inning. We were just talking though, always easier to work with a lead. We said that last inning. And the good news for Ferreira is that he has a lead and now he's ahead in the count one and two on Owen Tarpey. And swing and a miss for strike three. Second K for Ferreira. Leadoff man retired for the third consecutive inning. Yeah, he's really been rolling here so far. He's just been on, on it right now, getting the first three guys of each inning out. Yeah, he's <laughs> faced the minimum despite issuing a walk with two outs in the first, and then he picked off the runner, so. So far, you could say seven batters faced and seven retired, just not perfect. Oh, Moranis at the plate now. Swings over that one and two strikes on the batter now. The third baseman finished off that second inning with that fielder's choice, tag of third. And now coming to bat here at one down, and Ferreira in control again here 
That one gets Ooh. away from Fonseca. A slide piece there that slid a little too far. The 2-2 pitch coming here to Moranis. And that is cut on and missed as well. So back-to-back -back Ks for Ferreira. And that'll bring up the number nine man, Will Tarpey, the first baseman. And that's downstairs, a fastball down low. That one not too enticing, but typically, right, a couple strikeouts in a row, you would think that next guy would come up and first pitch swing because you don't want to get down in the count. Right. <laughs> knowing that uh, Ferreira's got the strikeout pitch working, and uh, but that one a little too far off the plate and down to uh, be enticing for Tarpey. Foul tipped at the dish, and it's one and two, and Ferreira going to look to strike out the side in order here in the third. Here's the one-two pitch. Strike three call, Ooh. and that ends the third. Ferreira with a lockdown third inning after getting the lead in the bottom of the second. That's four Ks out of the last five outs for Ferreira. He's just locked in right now. Everything's working for him. All pitches are working for him. All three of them are working. He's hitting his spots well. He's really rolling through the, through the innings. Yeah, you said it, Zach. Ferreira looking really good early, and uh, you got to love when you can catch a guy looking because that shows that your control's on right now, too, your command. Ferreira's throwing the ball where he wants to. Oh, look at this guy walking by our camera. Dave Souza <laughs> from the Herald making the trip up here. <laughs> uh, Dave's such a good guy. A lot of fun. between sports and like city events and stuff. Always run into Dave and Jack from the Herald, so usually get to chat and, oh yeah, good guys. So Green warming up, this will be his last toss already. I guess I, he didn't need a lot of pitches because uh, I just heard the yell down to uh, second from Dunstan, so he's ready to throw through already. I like it, keep it moving. <laughs> yeah, this game's <laughs> going fast. <laughs> Oh, yeah, my bad. <laughs> <laughs> I, we did softball yesterday um, against Brockton. And the uh, the girls came back, a walk-off win in the 7th, 3-2, the final. They were down by a run. Scored their only run, their first run, I should say, in the 6th to tie it. Then Brockton pulled right ahead in the 7th again. And then Durfee came back and threw two up there. And... Um, Won it on the walk-off base hit from Gabby Strito, who started as well. So the pitcher providing both, uh, providing the game-winning run um, and helping herself get that W, which is always nice. So uh, Jerfy came out with the win there. And I'll tell you, I mean, we got through four innings in that game. Four innings in one hour's time. It really wow. moved. Yeah, it really, really moved. There are a lot of quick innings. And, and I mean, softball tends to be like that, more so than baseball. But uh, that game moved particularly fast. I think we did all seven innings in just under an hour and a half. That's not <laughs> That's a all. really quick game. <laughs> yeah, <that's, laughs> you know. Geez. Chopper to the left side. Going to be a tough play for Moranis. And he does get the ball there in time. So Arietta, who led off the inning here, the number two batter in the lineup, is retired on the ground ball out. That's twice he's grounded out in the game, now 0 for 2. And we'll see Dominguez, who singled to right, or rather singled to center, in his first at bat, he'll come up at one and one. Yeah, Moranis is getting a lot of work over at third base. Yeah, he's been busy. Nice curveball dropping in there for Green for strike one. Yeah, between a uh, couple force, couple fielders' choices to the left side. An error. The line out. Yeah, he's been busy. That's for sure. Ooh, that one, that one just a little bit wide of the zone. 
Or at least it looked that way from here. But a generous call on wow. that outside. See, I think that was a little further out there. Yeah. Strike three to end the third uh, for Ferreira. Mm -hmm. But 0-2 and having to swing through it is Dominguez. And that's the first K of the day for Green. Yeah, I think that third, I think that second pitch was just a little outside. A little bit much, yeah. yeah it's a little outside. Again, we're on that off angle a little bit here, but I got a real we got a good look at the catcher's glove. Uh, yeah, a lot and, of and, movement. And you can too. yeah, and you can see the batter's box. So when it's to the left of the batter's box, it's never a good thing. Another chance for Moran is throwing on the run, and it's thrown away. Fonseca beats it out, and he's not going to take the turn. Probably a wise decision as it hit the hit the fence rather quickly. An infield single for Fonseca. He's on for the first time. So Durfee with the two-out base runner. And uh, Mativier with a chance to make some noise. He reached on that error from Moranis back in the uh, second inning, leading off that inning, and then was erased at third on the fielder's choice. And he swings through that one. Moreno, who scored the run last inning on deck, if it gets that far. That one bounces back, and it's heading all the way to the fence, and it dies there. Taking the turn at second is Fonseca, but he decides to wait, so he'll advance on the wild pitch, and now is the time, Zach, to cash in with two down with the runner in scoring position. Yeah, you want to make the defense pay for that. Nice two-out RBI here would get the Hilltoppers going again. They'd be all... They'd be all getting hyped for that. That's big. You can get two out RBIs. Anything with two outs is special. Grounded to the left side. Oh, and it hits Moranis in the face, and he's got to recover, and he's not going to. That's thrown away as well. Going to break for second. Mativier heading there. Coming home. Oh, this is going to play the plate, and he will be safe. Two nothing Hilltoppers. He's in there. No, I think he's out. Oh, I don't know. The out at third. That was. But the run does count, and Durfee with now a two to nothing lead. We will clean up the scorecard, and we'll see you on the other side for the fourth inning. It's a little shooken up. Yeah, a little shooken up is right. So we'll keep an eye on, we'll keep an eye on uh, Mativier as well. Fourth inning coming up. Stick around. We're back here at UMass for the top of the fourth inning. And uh, yes, the Hilltoppers run does count there because it was scored before that third out. Mativier got up okay, no problems. A couple tosses and now we'll hit the field. See, tr our trainer Kelly Mahoney was checking on him. He'll head out to right field, no worse for wear. And the Hilltoppers do have that now, that extra insurance run, that two run cushion. Always nice to have, you know, two up on the competition. Back to the top of the order. C.J. Dunstan will lead it off here in the fourth as uh, through the first three innings. A lot of zeros on the board for Ferreira and the strikeouts coming of late. He struck out the side in order in the third. Had a strikeout in the second as well. So four of the last five outs, he's done himself. Defense loves those kind of days, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Any day you're not doing much on defense is good. Right. And Dunstan taking a couple pitches in this at-bat. Hasn't swung yet in the first three pitches. He swung on the first pitch of the game, and he grounded out. So different approach for him here in his second go-around. And in a, now in a 2-1 hitter's count. That's in there for strike two. So Ferreira working back. That's a nice comeback pitch. You don't want to go down 3-1 to lead off the inning. That one missing outside 3-2. No, you're right. And again, it comes down to the you know the free base runners. And you know, Durfee has made New Bedford pay already. Two errors in the game, both on Morenas at third. Three two payoff pitch, curveball chopper to short. Slow roller. Strong throw to first, and he gets no. it. Nice pick Ooh. by Perry. Wow. Another 6-3 ground out for Dunstan. That time a little more challenging as uh, Arietta had to come in, charge the ball, and a great pick at first. 
Yeah, that was just a great job of Curtis to stay low on the ball and not come up on it. That was that was a hard skipper, too. That wasn't a long hop. Strike one to Dominguez, and um, Dominguez popped out, so he's 0 for 1. He popped to, to first base in the first inning. You know, Ferreira, he's working both sides of the strike zone, and he's really locked in right now. Look at that curve swinging right over this Dominguez, quickly down 0 and 2. Strikeout number five for Ferreira. Dominguez down swinging on three pitches, and there's two down in the fourth. And we'll get to see Will Santiago, the only batter to reach against Ferreira so far, and it was a, a walk issued by Ferreira in the first. And then he was picked off, as we said. Grounder to short, Arietta, nice scoop. Another tough pick, and it cleaned up. Perry's like a vacuum cleaner at first base right now. Another great pick on a low throw. I'll tell you, you know, Ariana's got a good arm, but he's kind of slinging it, and it's hitting the dirt. Got to get a little more elevation there. Make things a little easier for Perry. <laughs> yeah, no, he's making him work over there. Right. <laughs> he's probably not having much grip on the ball. Like we were saying before, it's starting to get a little chilly out here. That's possible, too. That's very possible. So two ground outs to short and a strikeout. Three up, three down once again for Ferreira as we've reached the halfway mark already in this ball game. And the Hilltoppers living on a prayer. <laughs> it's ironic. I actually have in my like classic rock playlist, I have Summer of 69 and this song, Living on a Prayer, back to back. Mm -hmm. in like the middle of the listing and they've just played it here back to back. <laughs> I didn't pl we didn't plan that. Great song. Great song from Bon Jovi. I think we I think I've said it before maybe on a broadcast with Gary but I love these like older classic rockers and stuff. Cuz they were the originals, you know. Yeah. Everybody now Nothing beats it, the original. Yeah, everybody now is just a copycat trying to you know follow suit but these guys were like the pioneers I mean Bon Jovi a little younger Brian Adams kind of on the younger but you know you look at guys like like the who I mean they're they going on almost 60 years playing I mean that's insane that's insane you know McCartney is, right I think he's 76 now 77 and he's still doing shows I mean you know from and they're not really putting out anything new either so when people are just still still buying tickets for yeah. all the same old same old you know you're doing something right you know Billy Joel <laughs> hasn't put out a studio album in almost 30 years yeah. if if not longer and he's he said it a couple shows he says yeah I don't have anything new for you it's just the same <laughs> old dot 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 yeah. I, I can't say it on the air <laughs> We'll, we'll say the G-rated, same old crap, <laughs> but he said something else. <laughs> yep. <laughs> and it's just like, I pe that people just love it. I mean, if he came out with something new, I, I mean, I'm sure I'd listen to it, but, I mean, they're going to go back to Piano Man and scenes from an Italian restaurant. Oh. They're not going to go to the new stuff, you know? So, anyway, bottom of the fourth here. Still 2 nothing. Hilltoppers, Ishmael Moreno. Scored one of those two runs. He scored the first run of the game back in the second. He's up here for his second A.B. He singled to left field and came around to score back in that second inning. He would have batted last inning, but uh, Mativier got thrown out at third. Yeah, a little aggressiveness, but he should have stayed at second, gave one, gave yeah. one of your better hitters a chance to get him in. Yeah, I have to be honest, I was a little surprised because he broke for third as the throw was then already in the air to home plate here. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I, I don't know. I, I'm a little bit surprised. I mean, it was still very close. Yeah. But you, you, there's that thing we always say, right, you never want to make the third out of the inning on the base paths. And especially in this situation, you know, New Bedford's throwing the ball around, sloppy defense. Yeah, they're making they're making errors. Wild pitch. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, ball gets, this is a big backstop. This is very much like at Durfee. Ball gets away and he's home or, or you know, or he moves up again, you know. So, I mean, you got to be careful with that sometimes. And, I, I mean, I'm never a fan of making an out on the base paths no matter what out it is. But, you know, it is, it's part of the game. 
Based on balls to lead off the inning here. So Moreno on, thanks to the free pass from Green, and Curtis Perry will come up to the plate. Snap throw over to first, and he does get back just in time. Tarpey was kind of playing forward a little bit, not right on the bag, and able to sneak back with Moreno. But he's got pretty good speed. I would say he's uh, he's probably a threat to run, mm -hmm. especially since Green's wind up even from the stretch, takes a little time to get to home and he doesn't really throw very hard. That would have been a good pitch to go on. <laughs> yeah, that would have ran the dirt. He would have got there, no problem. Change up in the dirt. Now on the bases right now, Moreno can afford to get a couple more in his secondary because Tarpey's going to be breaking in, expecting to bunt. It's going to give him more time to get back because now Tarpey's going to have to run back and make a tag. That's right. So he can get a little bit more. That's going to drop in there for a strike. Although it does look like, it does look like that uh, coach Coach Seed might have told Tarpey to hold hold the runner at first because after that last pitch here, he just he's staying on the bag now, expecting a pickoff. So might not be a bad time to drop a bunt now. Yeah, because now first base is going to be back. Yeah, check swing. Did they say he Wait, went he around? There's no way. That's an awful call. No, I think he said 2 1. He 2 1? Left hand? There's no way they called There's, that. Yeah, a swing. he barely took the bat off his shoulder. They called it. Wow, that's that's brutal. <laughs> I mean, he didn't even, there was no movement. He took no. the, barely even got it off his shoulder. That's awful. That's an awful call. Fighting it off to the left side out of play. Wow. Well, look at it this way. Either way, now there's two strikes. Yeah, so. he'd be in this situation but, regardless. Uh, if but if they called that a, a swing, that's not a swing. No. <laughs> no. I think the sun might have been in our men in blue. <laughs> might have been in Holy their eyes cow. or something. So now uh, still one and two with the runner at first. Nobody out. Up the middle, a chance for two. DaCosta to second to Perez. On to first, and he's out. 6-4-3, twin killing for the Whalers. Coach Martin for the Hilltoppers made the safe call himself. He thought maybe he was safe. Talking to the man in blue, you can see a quick little conversation <laughs> off to the right. We see that, but... Friendly exchange, nonetheless. 6-4-3, double play. That erases the runner, two quick outs. Busting at the plate, one for one, and an RBI. And that's, you know, those are the things, that's a confidence booster for pitcher. Bustin with a rip to left, and he's two for two from down to the number eight spot. So a two out base runner now for Durfee, and we'll see Kadima who lined to first in the second. Kadima not too bad from the bottom of the lineup either here. Uh, 353 with eight RBI. That's good production from the nine spot. I don't know if that's his usual spot, but for the most part, it, it, once you get to this time of the season, coach pretty much knows where guys are gonna be. So if you're down in the bottom third, typically you're down in the bottom third. <laughs> yeah. You know, maybe eight or nine, sometimes seven, depending on matchups. But for the most part, you know, you got that top third, pretty much the similar guys, the heart of the order, similar guys. Bustin takes off. Nobody at second base goes into center field. Bustin's going to break for third, and he will be safe <laughs> under the tag. And Moranis can't believe it. Wow. 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 I thought. So Bustin took off first. Now I understand why Dunstan didn't throw through it first. Yeah, he pumped Nobody was at second base. No one even broke. So they would call the throwing error, and E2 gets him over to third. Wow. He Huge flew chance. Them. He moved. Braden can yeah. move. That's upstairs, but a strike called on Kadima. I mean, let's fit, you know, Braden is Brad Bustin's son, our athletic director, so, you know, Braden's been around baseball forever. Yeah. Like, you know. He knows what he's doing. Oh, yeah, and he, and he can move. Kid can move. Kadima with a huge chance here. That's ripped to left field, and that is foul. 
Oh, man, these shots down the line. <laughs> They're tough to see from they here. They are. The, the field has just a little pitch to yeah. it, you know, for drain drainage, obviously. And, man, that looked really close, too, just like back in the, uh, I think it was the first inning, right? Yeah. Yep. The first inning, it was, uh, I think, Arietta or It was Dominguez. early in the game. Yeah. Oh, Kadima gave it a shot to left. Oof. But it is a long foul ball. And he strikes out. Green battles back, stranding the runner at third base, picking up his second strikeout. Four innings in the books here from UMass Dartmouth. It's the Hilltoppers 2, the Whalers 0 on Fred TV. Honor, courage, sacrifice, pride, our city. Fall River has traditionally been in the forefront of honoring our nation's soldiers, sailors, Marines, and airmen. Vietnam veterans took the initiative to secure rights to an 80% size replica of the Healing Wall for Veterans Bicentennial Park. The names of over 58,000 fallen heroes will be engraved on the 360 foot long replica wall. 100% of the money raised benefits the building of our Vietnam Veterans Memorial Wall in Fall River. Help build our wall which is scheduled to open in 2020. The meaning, the spirit, and the value of the wall is everyone's. Be part of this exceptional, once-in-a-lifetime project. To make a donation, please visit vietnammemorialwall.org or connect with us at facebook.com. Top of the fifth here, we will see Frantic Jamie to lead things off, the cleanup hitter. Ian DaCosta and Yomar Perez, four, five, and six. The big part of the Whalers order, and there is the first hit of the day for New Bedford as Jamie swings at the first pitch. After four no-hit innings for Ferreira, a great first half of this game for him. I mean, you knew he's, all, he's around the plate. You know, sooner or later, a first pitch is going to go somewhere, and that ball was stung. Is going to bring up DaCosta, who struck out in his first at-bat. Grounder to the left side, and that's going to sneak through. Moreno looked like he was playing in. Looked like he was playing in a bit, maybe expecting a bunt, because he was definitely shallower than Braden was. So the first two reach here on, on base hits. Off the first two pitches of the inning. And now Perez will come up with a chance here to uh, get the Whalers on the board. A good start to this inning. They're going to try to jump the bunt down, and it goes out of play. And for Perez, all he's got to do is get it to the left side because Moreno's got to try to hang back at third if he can. Yeah, Moreno's going to be staying at, he's going to be staying home trying to get the force at third. So that whole side's going to be just Ferreira. Yeah. So you, so the Hilltoppers hope that Perez, that's a foul ball. And that's, that's big. So two strikes now. I'd be very surprised to see him bunting again. Yeah, I would be too. I, I don't think he will. Because these first two were not that pretty. So 0-2 now to Perez, and he strikes out. That's a big first out for Ferreira, and it is strikeout number six. Huge strikeout. Now that sets up an in and double play. He can get out of it in one pitch right here. Right. Five of the six strikeouts have been of that variety, swinging. The only one looking was to end the third when Will Tarpey struck out. Now Owen Tarpey at the plate, Owen one count to him. And you're absolutely right, Zach. Now they're thinking inning ending double play. That one well outside. Fonseca having to stretch the arm out to reel that one in. Was Brett on JV last year, or was he your backup? Brett was backing up for me last year a lot, and he would. Well, he was actually DHing a lot more. Because I remember, I remember yeah. seeing him in the lineup quite a bit. Yeah, he was. He was primarily our DH. 
I bet he's thrilled you're gone. No. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, yeah, yeah, you get behind the dish. No, because I remember him. I mean, he had some good games last yeah. year, so I remember him some playing. Good offensive output. Yeah, yeah. Good sinker. Two-seamer turned over on the outside, and Ferreira in command once again. Swung on and missed. Strikeout number seven and back-to-back -back K's for Ferreira trying to work around back-to-back -back leadoff hits for the Whalers. That's the second time Owen Tarpey's gone down on strikes and now Moranis will step in trying to atone for a couple errors early. One that cost a run. And he'll look at strike one. What a hook from Ferreira. I think he might double up here. You think drop the hook again? I think he's going to go at him at second. He's cutting off really far. Yep. Oh, good call, Zach. And <laughs> almost picked him off. <laughs> yeah, he was off. Bustin cheated, cheating in. I know, and I, I made an error, by the way, saying Bustin couldn't get to the ball. It was actually Ariata's at short. And a little slip of the tongue there. So Ariata on the base hit, the second hit of the inning from DaCosta. When I said Moreno was playing in, it was actually out of the reach of Arietta as short. That's driven to left field, but the wind is going to drop it. This is going to be a tough play. No, Arietta moves over and makes the play on the pop-up. The wind knocking that one down as well. The Whalers get their first two hits of the game, the first two hits that Ferreira's allowed, but he strands both runners, two strikeouts and a pop-up in the top of the fifth, and the Hilltoppers continue to hold their 2-0 lead and we're going to get to see the top of the order in the bottom of the fifth. I like what I'm seeing, Zach. I have to say, especially from a, uh, a pitching standpoint, it's some great plays, particularly Perry at first, yeah. some of those scoops at first. I mean, saving some base runners, saving some errors. Right. Those can turn into runs. This could be a different game. He misses two of those or even just one of them. You know, I wonder... Too, like, you know, you're playing on, you know, I don't mean, this isn't to say anything bad about Skip Lewis Field, but again, you're, we're playing on a college field here. So this is, this is a little different animal. But, you know, the ground is so level, everything's so well manicured. You know, it's like a pro field. And you, you wonder if that makes, it, it's got to make it easier at least, or the fielders feel a little more comfortable trying oh, to make yeah. plays knowing that, you know, it's not going to hit a rut, take a dive to the left or up into yeah. their face. Where, where it starts is usually <laughs> where know? it's going to finish, right? That makes yeah. it definitely a lot more easier. Because you get some of the ones that skip Lewis, and it comes off the bat in the grass. It's right at you. You're set up. Yeah. And then it hits that lip, and now it's going over your arm side shoulder, and you're all trying to scoot around it in a mess. Like, I remember our fresh, my freshman year, we were playing on the skip Lewis field. Yep. Because varsity had an away game. Whatever the case was, we were on the Skip Lewis field. Yep. Nate Ladera playing shortstop, one of our better defenders yeah, on yeah. varsity, made like five or six errors that game just on balls in the lip oh alone, just coming up and all over the place. Yeah, that's that's got to be frustrating. <laughs> <laughs> it was it was awful. All right. Ready to go here in the bottom of the fifth inning. Jose Paban going to step into the box for his... Third at bat, he's uh, 0 for in the game. 0 for 2, a grounder to the left side. That's a fair ball. Moranis bobbles that one and throws that away. A collision at first base. So Pabon couldn't make the turn. But obviously both guys trying to make something happen there. So handshakes, Tarpey's all good. Pabon's all good. But Moranis... Can't wait for this one to be over. <laughs> His third error at third base. He's having a rough day. Yeah. Tough afternoon for Parker Moranis. Jose Arrieta now stepping in. A ground out to second. A ground out to third. He is 0 for 2. Oh, they got the runner in the rundown. One, three, six, four. 
And I think three. That's the first bit. Yeah. One, three, six, four, three. And the runner picked off. That's something that should almost never happen. Get picked off by a righty. That's, yeah. That should almost never happen. Well, now both sides have had it happen. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I mean. Because <laughs> Ferreira did it to end the first. Yeah. But the uh, error and the base runner erased here. One down now. Nobody on for Arietta. And he looks at a ball. One, three, six, four, three. Yeah, all you got to look for with a righty is the back foot coming off the rubber because anything other than that, he's going to balk. So it should almost never yeah. happen, and it's happened twice now. That's true. Hard ground ball to the left side going foul just to the left of the bag. Between the bag and Coach Elm Schneider. Nice bare hand scoop from Coach. Still got it. No glove even. <laughs> <laughs> Upstairs, no, call on a strike, wow. A couple times we've seen that higher pitch. Again, you know, we're we're a little lower too. Like right. the field is almost higher than we are. So like, yeah. you know, the pitcher's mound is my eye level. So that might be a little bit, oh, poking the bat out. This is gonna be trouble, that's gonna drop. Thought about two, but wisely puts on the brakes. Ariana with his first hit. Arietta, rather, with his first hit of the day. A little bloop single to center field, and the Hilltoppers keep the hits coming. That is the uh, sixth hit of the day for Durfee. That's a great piece of hit from Arietta. Two strikes, not trying to do too much. Just connects and puts it out in the right field, right center field. You know, and that's good. That's good awareness of the situation too, because he just saw a pitch that we thought was maybe a little high and up and away. He called the strike, and they basically went right back there. Yeah, they and he was ready to protect the outside part of the plate. So that's good good smart hitting, as you said. Dominguez up. One for two with a base hit and a strikeout. And that one down low. Yeah, Arietta did a good job of using the at-bat to win the at-bat. Mm -hmm. Using previous pitches to see it again. He saw a decent amount of pitches there. He got a foul ball, a couple balls off the plate, a strike call. Ooh, swung through that one and almost another pick. Oh, that was close at first. Whalers trying to erase base runners any way they can, and the base runners need to be on the defensive. <laughs> <laughs> Dominguez, he was trying to make this a four-run game with I that swing. That was huge. I know, and that was. A, I think that might have been changeup because he was well ahead of it. Yeah, yeah he was. That was a huge swing. That's driven pretty deep to right, but it's just going to hang up there for Jamie to squeeze on it and out number. Two of the inning. So back to the bag is Arietta. Brett Fonseca will step up to the plate. He also, one for two. A fly ball out to left to end the first. An infield single in the third and a run scored. And that was Durfee's second run. That's hit to short. DaCosta to second. An easy ground ball out to end the inning. Five frames in the books. Hilltoppers hold the lead 2-0 here on Fred TV. Top of the sixth inning here from UMass. Evan Massoud and Zach Souza with you. Nine, one, and two expected for the Whalers, who still trail two zip. Hilltoppers with single runs in the second and third innings. And Ferreira has been on full lockdown mode on the mound today for Durfee and he starts off like he started so many hitters in the first five with strike one. Will Tarpy at the plate struck out looking to end the third he's 0 for 1. And you know for someone Zach we were saying for someone who doesn't overpower you um, seven strikeouts in five <laughs> innings not too shabby for Ferreira either that that's that's getting to the higher end of the spectrum for him in terms of strikeouts. Yeah, absolutely. He's he's not really known for being that type of guy. But Rounder to second to Buston. And an easy ground ball out for the first out of the six. You were saying? Yeah, he's like you were saying, he's not really known to be that guy, but he's stepping up today and he's being that guy. Yeah. He's getting a lot of a lot of strikeouts. 
He's using his off speed well, though, getting a lot of swing and strikeouts, two guys out in front. Oh, yeah, mixing the pitch as well. Yeah. And, and you know what? And he's shown, though, that the fastball can be effective, too, because he's thrown some real good two seamers. Um, oh, yeah. You know, just, just to keep the hitters honest, you know, you got to give him some different variations mm -hmm. in speed, of course, and that's actually how we got Tarpy the first time, Will, uh, to strike out. It's a fastball right on that outside corner. So when you mix enough breaking break -in stuff and you throw a fastball in there, they're not ready for it. Right. <laughs> Yeah, you're, like using, that. you're using your breaking stuff as much as he is. It makes your fastball look quicker. It makes it look more like it has more cut to it, more life. It's yeah, it's good the way he's mixing up his pitches. Well, C.J. Dunstan, the catcher, leadoff man in the lineup, 0 for 2 with two ground ball outs to short. The last one we talked about in the fourth, the couple scoops that Perry made over at first. Uh, real nifty play there from uh, Arietta and... Perry, oh, come on. That's got to be a strike. Come on. It's been a strike all day. That is. But not that time. Come on. I mean, that's right there. That's yeah, right I mean, I, the I would corner. imagine, Zach, that you being a catcher, you know the strike zone just as good as the as as our man in blue, and I'm not sure if he blinked on that pitch because that was even better than the previous pitch. I mean, come on. I'd like to know where that missed because that was – He's missing even, a good game. That was even way better than uh, the <laughs> curveball. Right there. I mean. Second walk of the day issued by Ferreira. He issued one way back in that first inning. And now a base hit up the middle. As Dominguez, first pitch swinging, sending it to center. So two base runners on with one down, and we'll see Will Santiago 0 for 1 with a walk. Yeah, you've got to have those pitches. That la The last two to Dunstan looked good, but that very last one, ball four, looked way better than the one that wasn't called the pitch prior. Ground ball to the left side, and it is through. Kadima coming up throwing. The bases will be loaded with one out. Everybody up 90 feet. And Santiago with his first hit of the day, a ground ball through the left side under the dive of Arietta. And now Frannick, Jamie, the cleanup hitter. This is exactly the spot you want him in. The Whalers making some noise here late in the game. Ethan's going to go here. Yeah, I think you should go breaking ball outside. Try to get something on the ground, get a double play, get yourself out of the inning. Boy, you called it, Zach. <laughs> you think you've caught a couple games for Ferreira in the past? <laughs> That's a great curveball yeah, for strike good. one. And even better is he swung on and missed. No contact made. Another one. Grounded to the left side, and that is a foul ball. And that's a good thing because Moreno was off the bag. So yeah, two strikes. That would have tied the game if that got through. Oh, yeah, without a doubt. Without a doubt. What do you think? Think he goes at him three times with the same pitch? I don't know. I'd like to see the change up down and in. Yeah. Instead of another breaking ball. Upstairs, that is sliced to come right on, field. On. And on the run, he won't get there. A fair ball. It gets down. Coming home is Dunstan and Dominguez. And Santiago will be out at the plate but it is a tie game. So the Whalers tie up the ball game. Tried to get a little too aggressive sending Santiago. Well, I go back to the walk that should have been strike three. Right, exactly. Sorry, that's, but that's that was the end of an inning. That's the first. Yep, that that would end the inning now. Number one and number two, as Jamie's at second with that two-run double. Dunstan would not have scored. He wouldn't even be on base. Yeah, exactly. That changes the whole inning. Mm -hmm. Nice spot. So Santiago thrown out though at the plate. So there are two down, and DaCosta up at the plate. He's one for two. A strikeout 
in the second and a base hit in the fifth and now down on the count one and two. I mean, he's getting so many guys with it. He's got to come. I want him to come back at him. Come back at him again with it. Establish it. A curveball? Yeah. Oh, <laughs> just getting a piece to stay alive is to cost a foul tipping it at the plate. I mean, the one thing I'll say that I, I mean, I'm okay. At least these, the runs you came on, you know, hits, no errors. Mm -hmm. You know, it's been clean. A, Durfee's played a clean game so far. Check swing. Absolutely. That's a good call. He held up. That's a good call. That was a good pitch. Oh, it was a great That's pitch. That's a good pitch right there. That's sent to center field. Pabon underneath it for the third out on a hard hit fly ball to center. But the Whalers grab a pair of runs. The rally starting on a questionable ball four call. And nonetheless, New Bedford on the board. And a tie game we have after five and a half. You folks at home, rewind your cable boxes, your, your DVR here, rewind live TV and see if you think that was strike three two different times. Because <laughs> I sure think it was. Back to back pitches. That was. I sure think it was, and that's not a biased opinion. That this, the ball four was, there's no way that wasn't a strike. I'm sorry. So, two runs in the inning, three hits, no errors, one left on. And Ferreira with his only blemish, blemishes of the day. So if you're Durfee, you got to get back to work. And the bottom yep. half of the order has done more, it made more noise than the top half in this game. Let's see Mativier, Moreno, and Perry. Five, six, and seven. It's a brand new game right now. No, nope. that big, that blowout win against Brockton went nine innings because it was tied at nine. Let's let's not forget, Durfee was down eight nothing after one inning yeah. in that game. And they came back, crawled back, finally tied it up, and then it went to extras, and then in the ninth inning, they put up the 13 runs. So this is not the first time Durfee's been tied late in a ball game in big three play. Bunting here to lead off the inning. And thrown out at first is Mativier. One down, Moreno coming up. He's been on twice, one for one, with a single and a walk, and a run scored. We'd like to see um, someone get on that is sent up the middle and asking you shall receive, Evan. <laughs> 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 Base hit for Moreno. He's two for two, been on three times. And I was saying, what I was going to say was, be nice to see someone get on and have somebody on base for uh, get busting up this inning with somebody in because on base because he's two for two with an RBI. First Perry, 481 hitter. Reached on a fielder's choice back in the second. Hit into the double play in the fourth. The Whalers have shown that they're not afraid to throw over to first either. Be a snap throw from Dunstan or the pickoff attempt from Green. So Durfee got to be careful on the bases. Don't want to lose a base runner now that the game's tied. Got to start thinking a little differently, right? Yeah, you definitely got to be a lot more, not so much uh, protective, but you want to be a lot more safe. You don't want to be as aggressive. Yeah. Yeah, right now you now is the time you need base runners, and particularly because 
it would be nice to go into the seventh and grab the lead back here and not have to go to the bottom of the seventh or possibly extras. Chopper to the left side foul. Breeze picking up a little bit again. The sun felt good for a while. Some of these wispy clouds kind of went away. It was a little chilly for a while, but the sun started feeling good. Now the wind again. There's a rope to left. Perry with his first single of the day. Up to second, Moreno. And now Buston will look to try to keep a perfect day going. Two for two with the RBI. Coach Seed out to talk to Green. We're gonna have a meeting at the mound with the whole infield. So two men on here, thanks to back-to-back -back singles. They go ahead run at second for the Hilltoppers with one down. Been a very entertaining game. I mean, I like these low scoring games too. I mean, offense is fun, but you know, the games can get really, really long when you have these big innings and a lot of runs on the board. Pitchers' duels are always keep you on the edge of your seat, you know? Yeah, because every, every little thing matters. Exactly. Miss a pitch, that could end up hurting you. You know, I mean, even like just a little dribbler that you get on can spark something. So, yeah, I, I'm a fan of these games as well. And, and, you know, I mean, now, too, a wild pitch, something that gets by the catcher. Yeah. You're looking at second and third here with one down. Anything can score somebody. Right. Like to see it the old-fashioned way here and have Braden pick up his third hit of the day because Marino's got pretty good speed out at second base. And we'll see what happens here. Buston with a single in the second to drive in a run. That was to right field and then a single to left. Last time up in the fourth. Ooh, that Ooh. hits Buston. And the bases will be loaded with one out. And it's going to bring up Chris Kadima, who's 0 for 2. Almost had a double down the line, a rope that was just foul. Corners in. Short and second back, and a huge spot for Durfee here in the bottom of the sixth. Strike one to Kadima. These are those golden opportunities that you just can't let pass you by. And particularly since New Bedford just tied this ball game yeah. up. So Kadima in the biggest spot of the game for probably any batter so far on both sides. That has popped up and heading back in its own two. Oh, those pitches always look so good because they're right at eye level, but you can't hit those. Right. <laughs> if it's ah. above your shoulders, <laughs> yeah. you're not going to be able to square up on it. But he did chase it. All he's got to do here is put the ball in play. Ball in the outfield will score one easily, but mm -hmm. even a ground ball, if he can make one of the middle infielders move, he's a quick guy. He might be able to beat it out. He is fast. That is driven deep to left field. Santiago backing up on it. He'll make the catch. Tagging it third is Moreno with the go-ahead run. And Hilltoppers take the lead back. Kadima gets it done with the sack fly in the RBI. That's big late in the game. Absolutely. And the best part is that, you know, a double play would have ended the inning. It drives in the run on that one out. Mm -hmm. And now a chance for Pabon in his fourth at bat. He's reached once on the error to maybe do something here as well and grab an insurance run. But nonetheless, the Hilltoppers do have their lead back. It's three to two Durfee. That one down and away. So 2-0, oh, I'm sorry, 1-1. One one. 
one and one. Fabon swung through the first pitch. I remember it being in the dirt, and I'm thinking, <laughs> yeah. it's not a strike. No, he swung through it. So one and one now to Pabone. Base hit to, oh, it's off the third baseman, Moranis. Coming around from second is Perry. The throw home will be not in time. Nice. And that is the fourth error of the day on Moranis, and a very costly one. Hey, Moranis cannot wait for this game to be yeah. over. And you know, that's how, um, that's how Pabon reached in his last at bat before getting picked off. But the two run cushion here heading into the seventh, that's a big insurance run right there. So Buston up to second. Pabon at first now for Arietta, who's one for three. He grabbed his first hit in his last at bat, which was last inning. Low strike call. That one bouncing in, nice block by Dunstan to keep it in front of him. I said base hit on Pabone's hit because I actually thought it was going to get past, <laughs> past Moranis. I didn't think he'd even get there. But it turned into the same thing, yeah. <laughs> basically. Actually, I have to be honest. I don't even know. If it, if it got through the left with Santiago charging, I don't think that Perry would have scored. I think he would have been out. Yeah, or I don't they, even or, think or they would have tried it. Him. Yeah, they wouldn't you even know? tried it. But the error, it botched it, got all the way yep. out to the middle of the infield. And um, that is strike three. Wow. About a foot off the plate. Another questionable call from behind home plate against Durfee. I mean. But the Hilltoppers have the lead back. It's four to two as we head to the seventh. We want you to hear it first. A street sweeper is coming to your neighborhood. The Department of Community Maintenance in cooperation with the mayor's office as well as the Committee on Public Works are collaborating to improve the cleanliness and overall appearance of our city streets. This restructured program runs through the summer. No parking times involve only a few hours and are similar to a parking ban during a snowstorm. This will enable the sweeper to reach both sides of the curb. Residents will have one day's notice to prepare, so be on the lookout for temporary signage. For more information, call John Perry at the Department of Community Maintenance at 508-324-2760 or contact Laura Ferreira at the Traffic Department at 508-324-2577. To see a list of the scheduled streets, visit the city's website at www.fallriverma.org. You've heard it. Now please help us keep our city clean. Thank, Thank you. you. Top of the seventh inning here at UMass Dartmouth. The Hilltoppers reclaiming the lead after New Bedford tied it up in the sixth. Durfee came back with two of their own in the bottom of the sixth. And Ferreira out on the hill to try to close out what would be Durfee's second big three win. And he's going to get a ground ball right back to him for a fairly easy, but the out is made. Oh, he stepped on the bag. It sure looked like before the runner got there. And Perry is I mean, surprised. Now Coach Holmschneider going to come out. He's having an ugh, he's having an awful day. I mean, the throw the... took him off the bag, but he went and stopped on yeah, the bag. It sure looked like right. before the runner got there. Now, that's a tough view to see that it I is. understand. But, I mean, all day he really hasn't been too great. Yeah, but our man in blue was <laughs> right looking in front like of a... he was in front of the play. Yeah. I, I don't know. Naked eye here, I think that that's an out. And you made the same reaction instantly. Safe call. No. But I'm not buying it. No. So that's going to go as a throwing error. I mean. 
That's oh. going to go as a throwing error, so Ethan's going to pick up a an error here, and the base runner will get on. Strike called on the outside. That one wide, too, so I guess the zone getting a little generous here in the latter half of the game. So Perez at first on the error. Tarpy at the plate, down 0-1. Ferreira ready to fire, throw on to first to check on him. Nothing doing. You know, right now, think about it. You got to think of it this way, is that Perez, you need two runs to tie it. He's only one run. So you focus on the hitters and just get your outs. Yep. Can't worry about the runner so much. You, know, you could get to third base. I mean, he still matters, but he could get to third, and you still got to get the guy at the plate out, and that's the bottom line. So, and I'm sure Ferreira, someone who's been on varsity for a couple years now, he knows that. Yeah, he's not worrying too much about him. Just want to keep him honest. It's a very small lead. Yeah, he's not going anywhere with no. that. No. Swung on and missed. Tarpey has gone down on strikes twice. He's 0 for 2. Once in the third, once in the fifth. And he's the last whaler to go down on strikes as well. Ferreira hoping to get him for a third time here. 0 and 2, and that is strike three called. Number eight for Ferreira. And the hat trick for Tarpey. Down on strikes for the third time. Tough day at the plate for the DH. Parker Moranis will step up. 0 for 2. And the difference in this game are the two unearned runs charged to him. If there's any time to be a hero, <laughs> it's right now. A strikeout victim in the third. Popped out to short in the fifth. Good block by Fonseca. He's had to do that a couple times this inning. So that one down low in the dirt. Outside, no strike call there. It's ball two. Ferreira really has been around the strike zone all day long. That one upstairs, though, three and oh to the hitter. Will Tarpey on deck. So Coach Seed sticking with his lineup at this time. No pinch hitter, it appears. That's ball four. Up to second goes Perez. And down to, down to first with the second walk issued of the day by Ferreira is Moranis. The potential tying run. And now a mound meeting. Will Tarpey coming up to hit. He struck out looking in the third. And he grounded to second in the sixth. So he's 0 for 2. And a big spot here. Now is where you start thinking a little more about base runners because the tying run is at first base. And now you've got to be careful. So big spot for Ferreira here in the seventh inning. Tying runs on base. 4-2 Durfee, and it's strike one called over the outside with one down. It never comes easy. No. <laughs> nope. <laughs> and it shouldn't. It shouldn't. It'd be nice once in a while. Yeah. <laughs> throw the dog a should, bone. You should have to work for it, right? 0-2 oh quickly to Tarpey. I mean, a huge bounce back to come back for, you know, Durfee to get those two runs after giving up two, take the lead back. I mean, that's that's grinded out baseball. Right back. Oh, it's off the mound. Time to get the runner. And Ferreira takes care of out number two on the ground. A 1-3 put out, but everybody up 90 feet. So that tying run now sitting at second base. Dunstan coming up 0 for 2. Walked last.
plate appearance and scored New Bedford's first run. So the catcher, the last hope for New Bedford. Ferreira back to the windup, low curveball, called a ball for being too low, it appears, because it certainly think I think it had a lot of the plate, Zach. Say just a little too low. So 1 0 to Dunstan. That one a little Ooh. higher. Strike called. 1 1. This is a huge bat for New Bedford. A huge at bat right now for, for New Bedford. A base hit that can tie the game right here. But Dunstan's not going to look for anything but a fastball. That second pitch was a strike, but he wasn't going to swing at it at all. Strike two, and Ferreira just one pitch away from stranding the Whalers and winning the game for Durfee. Trying to work out of the jam here in the seventh and nail down a win. That one bounces in and it'll go to two and two. So Dunstan gets to look at another one here. Ferreira with the two two pitch. Struck him out, and the Hilltoppers win it. The ninth strikeout for the Hilltoppers starter today, who goes the distance, stranding the tying run at second base. Durfee, big three winners for the second time this season, and they're now two and one in big three play. Ferreira threw a gem. He really did. He threw a tremendous game. Great pitching, very clean game for Durfee as well. Just the one, just the one miscue, and that came from Ferreira this inning. Yeah. Other than that, really. And it, great and, and honestly, it was an out. Yeah. <laughs> At least we think it yeah, was. Right. We'll go back and watch the tape later. But um, clean game. Everybody behaved, which is a good thing. That was a lot better uh, end of the game line than last year. So exactly. Yep, a 4-2 final score from UMass Dartmouth. Durfee picks up win number 12. We already know they're going to the tournament, but this one puts them in the win column again for big three play. Two and one in the league. <laughs> Greg Sullivan taking our photo here as we wrap up here. <laughs> so Zach, thank you. Glad that you were around to do this one. Believe me, it was, this was a lot of fun. <laughs> yeah, it was. Loved it. Final score, one last time here from UMass Dartmouth. The Hilltoppers four, the Whalers two. For Gary Leet behind the camera, Zach Souza, my broadcast partner today. I'm Evan Massoud saying so long. Stay tuned for more spring sports on Fred TV.